Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. How do you specifically hedge your overnight holds? That's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful question because so many of us, well, so many of you guys, I mean, we've been doing this for years, but so many of you guys have finally realized uh, the importance of hedging. Hedging is one of the greatest things you can do uh, with your account, okay, when you have, uh, when you have overnight exposure. Obviously, if you have overnight exposure and you're holding something overnight, what, what's the most basic thing you want, right? If you're holding something overnight, you want the stock to gap up, right? You're not buying, you know, you're not buying Procter and Gamble and holding Procter and Gamble for a day trade. You know, a name like Procter and Gamble and Lowe's uh, and you know General Electric and anything else is under the sun. Most stocks are not tradable, right? Think about it. they're not tradable stocks. They're investing vehicles. So Tesla is a lot different than GE. Amazon is a lot different than Procter and Gamble. Um, you know, Apple is a whole lot different than you know anything under the sun. And this is why there's only 10 to 12 beta names that we concentrate on pretty much 90% of the time, because when they do go and they they go macro, okay, technically, there's a high probability they're gonna gap up, right? Like Tesla, seven, 10, 12, 15 dollars, right? These are big, big, you know. These are big things in your arsenal when you get the green light from the daily chart. Unfortunately, most stocks are not like that. They don't go up 18 cents, go down 20 cents, go up 30 cents, go up 40 cents. And they're that traditional swing trading vehicle. When you're trading a name, for example, like a name like Tesla, and it finally breaks out, let's just pretend this is tomorrow is the first day and it closes above this channel. Obviously, you're gonna wanna be, you know, you're gonna want to be, um, you're gonna want to be long the stock because it's finally giving you a green light on the daily chart. However, right, and this is the however part, we also know that right now we are in a headline market, which basically means there's a lot of grenades pointed at you, right? There's a lot of rockets, a lot of landmines that you can stop, that you can literally stand on. Number one, the debt ceiling on and off. We don't know what's gonna happen, right? Obviously, I think it's gonna get done. Does it make a really difference? Again, like I said in the video yesterday, does anybody really care at this day and age, if the if the government is closed for a week, I mean, what are you going to not get your stamp? Who cares, right? Um, so more important is you have a lot of headlines. You have China all over the place. And if you guys, I don't know if you guys saw uh, this news over the weekend. You know, they started talking about uh, again delisting, right? So there's a lot of volatility uh, coming out of China. You got debt ceiling. Uh, up in the air. You have your Fed. Do we taper? Do we not taper? A lot of a lot of people are turning around. So, well, how can you how can you taper? How can you taper now? Again, most people have not recovered from this whole pandemic thing. How can you start raising rates? Doesn't make sense, right? So, there's a lot of things on the table. You got the debt ceiling. You have China. You have uh, tapering. You still got Afghanistan floating in the background. You have so many things that are headline driven right now that anything and, and oh by the way you have the you have these surging yields that are always bad for tech right when you have surging yields that's not a good thing for tech if you guys remember uh, a couple of days ago when we you know gapped down whatever it was 500 points for technology right that's a surge in yields you don't want that so there's a lot of dangers right now in the market and the last thing you want to do is be long overnight okay long overnight in the market absolutely naked even if you are even if you are trading uh, on the option side, and let's just pretend you allocate X amount of dollars uh, to your covered position, you're not going naked to a covered position, you at least you know that your max pain is going to be if that option goes to zero. The point is when you have a headline driven market and sometimes you can throw a curveball, you kind of want to sleep at night, okay? And that's the most important thing. So what you guys saw, and I think a lot of you guys did incredibly well uh, with the hedging aspect of kind of what we do, is if you are long, for example, Tesla overnight, and again, the only reason you should always be long anything overnight is if it finally confirms the macro range. So if it closes above this channel here, uh, come Monday, and you say to yourself, wow, damn, that, look, look at all the option flows coming in. I, I want to be long Tesla, right? I, and again, you should, right? But again, in the back of my mind, you're saying to yourself, well, man, the last thing I want to do 
okay, is be long anything overnight and have, you know, and have, oh, Evergrande. We totally forgot about Evergrande. Evergrande come out and say, hey, by the way, we missed our, uh, uh, you know, we missed our payment. We're not going to be able to do it. Now there's a good possibility of default. I don't care what you're long overnight, okay? Your stock is smoked the next day. You know, futures are down 500. I don't care how good the Tesla setup is. Your Tesla position, your Tesla's down 15, 20, okay? I don't care how good it looks. So the most important part is when you're driving, when you're, excuse me, when you're trading, especially in overnight market, uh, what you want to do is be hedged, right? So you're long your underlining equity, and now you're asking yourself, well, what's the most, what's the most, um, where's the biggest bang for my buck, the biggest safety instrument that I can uh, be short against my underlining equity so in case the market implodes overnight, all possible, right? I will be protected. I, I don't have to wake up four o'clock in the morning, uh, sweat overnight, you know, can't sleep overnight because I'm in a position and I'm worried about it. So the best way to hedge technology, right? Whether you're long Amazon, uh, Tesla, <clears throat> Apple, Facebook, any, any name in the NASDAQ 100 is being short the queues, okay? And what that does is you are now putting the overnight, right? The overnight risk element, you're starting to shrink. And what happens is if you are, and we saw this, right? That was the, that, that was the coolest part about your question, James, because we saw it three times this week. You guys remember Monday and Tuesday, right? Long Tesla overnight. And Monday and Tuesday, guess what happened? The market gap down every single day. The market, matter of fact, gap down <clears throat> the first two days of the week, right? And what happened was the underlying security, one day Tesla was down 12. The other day, excuse me, one day Tesla was down uh, 7. And the next day Tesla was down 12. But the whole point of hedging, you are taking the cues and you're shorting them overnight. So in case the market decides to gap down, what you're doing is you are covering your short hedge, right? Your short hedge on the cues. And if the stock is strong, we all know how aggressive um, and how, how really meaningful these daily charts are, especially in, uh, especially in uh, cult names like a Tesla, um, that you can make money on both sides. So if you have a gap down in the market, um, you cover your cues, right? You cover your cues. And obviously if you are taking Tesla overnight, that means it confirmed the night before that there's a high probability that the stock will go green at least once for the day. And what we saw this week, that's exactly what happened, right guys? Uh, first day, long Tesla overnight, short cues, the market gapped lower. Remember that? A really aggressive move down. Cues were down seven. You very rarely see the cues down that much, but that's the whole point of throwing a curveball. So your underlying security actually outperformed your hedge. And if you guys remember Monday, right? Monday, you cover your cues and Tesla went up $12, $13 that day, right? So you made money on both sides. So what you're basically doing is any NASDAQ name that you like, that you love, that technically uh, is a go, the option flow market is dictating higher prices. The one thing that you do want is kind of protection in uh, a really aggressive, right? Uh, a pretty aggressive um, headline driven market. And the last thing you want to do is go home overnight naked, okay? Um, and have this really big matzo ball hit the, hit, the, hit, the, hit the headline and you're down 20 points in your position. So it's a really good way. Uh, it's a really good way to kind of uh, make yourself uh, sleep at night. Uh, decrease your risk and as you guys saw and not only did we see this on Tesla from the long side we saw this uh, we saw the Amazon right you know the Amazon short from uh, from yesterday right from from Thursday night into Friday Amazon closed below right we saw this on Amazon as well Amazon closed below uh, below 3290 right 3290 so Amazon was a short overnight and that was the opposite right you were long queues overnight short Amazon and guess what happened on Friday, right? Market actually gapped up again. Qs are up a dollar and change, almost $2, okay? And what happened after? Amazon rolled over because again, there was a technical sell signal on the close on Thursday 
and Amazon went down at, at some point, you know, $25. So you made money on both sides. That's obviously the best case scenario. But in a weird way, if you're long Tesla overnight, you want to you want to lose money on your hedge. Think about that, right, guys? Because if the Nasdaq 100, right, James? If the if the Nasdaq is up 100, Tesla's up 25. <laughs> you know, Tesla's up 15. Tesla's up 20. So you lose two, three dollars on your Qs, but you're going to make 15, 20 on Tesla. So in a weird, freakish way, you kind of want to lose money on your hedge. You know, you it's going to decrease your profit, but it's going to let you sleep at night give you a possibility that you could actually make money on both sides of the market uh, if indeed you have a lower open and just because uh, these are cult stocks right uh, these are cult names um, the best way to do it the best way to do it is uh, just kind of having a hedge overnight and kind of a follow-up question Matthew just asked what should be the ratio between the position and the hedge um, we kind of went over this a little bit on Friday in the webinar I don't know if you were there there's a couple of ways you could hedge, right? You could do it dollar for dollar, okay? So for example, and I'm just throwing an example just to, just to make it easier. If you have a $10,000 position, right? If you have a $10,000 position on the long side, you could have a $10,000 position on the short side as a hedge, right? But the problem with beta, okay? And this is the only, this is the biggest difference between hedging your portfolio dollar to dollar versus hedging your beta name dollar for dollar it's not going to play out okay every stock is a little bit different matthew so for example amazon can have can have a 50 dollars range throughout the day obviously you're not going to buy ten thousand dollars worth of amazon and ten thousand dollars worth of Qs because your Q position is going to be much bigger than your amazon position right and i'm just using you could be you could be sticking with three shares you know, three shares of, uh, you know, Amazon versus, and I'm just obviously rambling different weird numbers, versus, uh, you know, 100 shares of Qs. Obviously, you don't want that. The Qs go down six. You're down six points on Qs and you're, you know, <laughs> and you're up uh, $18 on your Amazon position. You don't want that. Um, I think the best way, and we've kind of, we, we've kind of gone uh, individually. I, I think depending on which stock we want to be long overnight, right, you kind of want to go individually. So, for example, Apple, right? Apple, you have to look at Apple's chart and you say to yourself, well, what's, what's, been app, what's Apple been doing for the last three, four days on these gap downs? If you guys notice, Apple has been, you know, probably within, what would you guys say? About a dollar and a half, what would you guys say? About a dollar and a half, two dollars every single time the stock gapped. So you kind of want to use that as, uh, you know, you kind of want to use that as, as a barometer. So you say to yourself, well, if I want to be, I'm just using Apple as a long in this case. If I want to be long Apple and I already know it's been gapping lower, you know, a dollar and a half, two dollars, what should I, what should I, how many cues should I take to kind of, you know, to kind of offset that? Okay. But at the same time, I still want to be long. For example, on the cues to Apple, you probably want to, because you basically, on a gap of the Q's two dollars, you're probably gonna have a gap of Apple about a dollar and a half. So you probably on Apple you would want to use one and a half to one ratio. So for every let's just say 150 shares of Apple, you're gonna want to be short uh, 100 shares of Q's. But at the same time, when you're talking about Tesla, right? That's a whole different thing. Tesla, for example, you might want to be short. You know, for every 30 shares i'm just using an easy number for every 30 shares of tesla long you kind of want to you want to you want to be short 100 shares of apple so you kind of want to you you know you want to kind of track what's been the gap app gap up and gap down ratio okay for the last week or so for the stock based on current market conditions and at that juncture okay at that, that juncture you can uh you can make a definitive adjustment of how many shares you want to be long versus how many shares you want to hedge your bet because every stock is different it's a lot easier guys it's a lot easier if you have a hundred thousand dollar portfolio right of stocks like i don't know mcdonald's uh mcdonald's uh procter and gamble and ge and you say to myself yourself oh, okay you know i'm not really in love with this market let me short a hundred thousand dollars worth of spies that's different, right? You have, a, you, have a, you have a portfolio that's not aggressive, that's not volatile, but you want to, you know, you're, you're a proactive investor, 
right? You're a proactive investor and you're just trying to, you're just trying to curb your risk as the volatility increases versus taking a specific position in like Tesla, right? Everybody knows it's a little bit different. Tesla could be up 30. Tesla could be down 30. It's a little bit different than turning around and say, well, I have $50,000 worth of McDonald's. I don't like the market. It's a little bit scary. Let me short $50,000 worth of spies just to kind of hedge my position until the coast is clear. So it's a little bit different. And Matthew, the greatest part about it is I think every position kind of going forward, let's just talk about that position around two o'clock in the webinar, right? So we kind of know, you know, instead of guessing, we, we kind of know what we are. Uh, but yeah, every, everything is a little bit different. Uh, beta is a little bit different. They all have a little bit bigger uh, average true range channels, okay? And the most part of that average true range channel uh, is um, its ability to kind of increase uh, and expand. So everything's a little bit different. But yeah, um, I, I would definitely, I would definitely, or you could just ask me. I think that's the easiest way to do it. You can ask me, but I, I would definitely advise go through a week worth of what the stock has done, especially on gap downs, and then you'll have a scenario, and then you'll have a scenario at least in front of you. It won't be perfect, right? That's the one thing, it won't be perfect, but at least you'll have a scenario right in front of you that, um, that you can have at least, um, uh, you can have at least a course of action uh, and have data in front of you how you can uh, position, uh, position the right way, okay? So I think that's the best way to kind of describe um, how you would hedge, uh, especially, especially beta. Okay. Especially beta. 